Hi everyone, welcome to the video. Today we will be discussing about the construction and working of X-ray tube. Okay, so in the previous video we learned what is thermionic emission and about the atomic structure. Now we will learn about the parts of the X-ray tube and how does an X-ray tube works in order to produce X-rays. So let's move on to the video. In this picture you can see an image of an x-ray tube. So the x-ray tube consists of a lead case. The x-ray tube is in, uh, covered by a lead case. So this is the lead case. Now, what is the importance of this lead case is that this lead case enables the prevention of radiation to leak into the external environment apart from the window through which the x-ray passes. So this is the window. Only through this window the x-ray comes to the external environment and passes through the patient to produce images. So apart from this window, x-rays should not leak from any of the areas of the x-ray tube and that is why we insert the x-ray tube in a lead case so as to prevent the leakage of uh, x-rays through other directions. So this is the lead case. Now inside the lead case you will find a coolant oil. What is the function of the coolant oil is that this coolant oil acts as an insulator as well as it helps in dissipation of the heat, uh, uh, dissipation of the excess amount of heat that is produced inside the x-ray tube. So we know that as a result of the production of x-rays, 99% of heat is produced and only 1% of x-ray is produced. So that means there is excess amount of heat production inside the x-ray tube and therefore we use this coolant oil so as to dissipate uh, the the excess amount of heat produced inside the x-ray tube. Now after the coolant oil you will find the glass envelope. So the x-ray tube is, cover, uh, is covered by the glass envelope. So this is the glass envelope. Inside the glass envelope a vacuum condition is maintained. Vacuum condition means there is no um, uh, there is uh, no presence of um, air or any other material. So vacuum condition means it is a condition where you will not find any kinds of uh, materials or air. Now inside the glass envelope you will find the parts of the x-ray tube. So in an x-ray tube we have cathode, we have anode, okay, cathode is a negative electrode, anode is a positive electrode and the x-ray tube is connected to a high voltage power supply, okay. Now let's see what is cathode, cathode is made up of tungsten, so cathode is a tungsten filament, so this is a tungsten filament, surrounding the tungsten filament we have a focusing cup. This focusing cup is made up of molybdenum. Then we have anode. Anode is made up of copper material and in this copper material you will find a tungsten button inserted. So this tungsten button acts as the target. Now what happens in cathode? When you give a high um, electric supply what happens? The cathode gets heated to a high temperature. As I explained in thermionic emission, as a result of heating cathode to a high temperature, electrons from the cathode get ejected and moves to the surface of the filament. So, there will be electron accumulation in the surface of the filament. These electrons are known as space charge. Now, when you apply a high voltage Across the tube, what happens? The electrons get accelerated towards anode. The electrons will move towards anode. Anode uh, here in the anode, the tungsten button acts as the target. So this target will stop the electrons and causes deceleration of the electrons. As, as a result of which, X-rays and heat are produced. So these is these are the X-rays produced. This is a useful cone of X-rays. This is a primary beam of X-rays. Now the X-ray will come out through a window. 
the windows are uh, uh, the windows contains shutters known as collimators this collimators helps in uh, restricting the area of the x-ray beam okay that means the collimators help to de uh, to define or uh, to uh, uh, to define the area of exposure with the help of collimators you can increase the field of view as well as decrease the field of view based on uh, the part or the area to be examined if you want to examine a small part such as hand you can collimate the beam and uh, allow transmission of beam only to the useful area and collimate the remaining areas so if you are uh, uh, going to take x-ray of a larger part such as chest you can uh, open the collimator shutters and increase the field of view so these are the parts you will find inside the x-ray tube now we will uh, learn de uh, in detail about cathode about anode about the focusing cup uh, and also about filters collimators and all the material all the equipments associated with x-ray tube as i said already the cathode is made up of tungsten filament okay now why we are using tungsten is because it has high melting point low vapor pressure good ductility and low work function ductility means the ability of a metal to be uh, derived into thin wires that means we can convert the tungsten material into thin wire so as to form the tungsten filament so these are the reasons why we are using tungsten that is it has high melting point it has low vapor pressure it has good ductility and also it has low work function so the cathode that we are using is a tungsten filament that means we are using a tungsten wire having 0.2 millimeter uh, diameter and about 1 centimeter length so it is used as a coil format now we, why we are using coil format is when uh, we are using a coil format it provides large surface area for electron emission okay so instead of using a straight um, material if you are using the tungsten in the form of a coil or filament here we can see the surface area for electrons to get released is more so this will en enable greater number of electron release so this is the cathode this is a tungsten filament surrounding the tungsten filament we have focusing cup the function of focusing cup is to control the width of the electron distribution and direct the electron towards the target okay so this focusing cup is made up of molybdenum so this is all about cathode cathode is a tungsten filament well, the reason for using tungsten filament is it has high melting point it has low vapor pressure it has good ductility and low work, work function so the cathode we are using is in the form of a filament having 0.2 millimeter diameter and 1 centimeter long now why we are using tungsten as a coil is because it provides larger surface area for electron emission so this is a tungsten filament around um, it has a focusing cup the function of focusing cup is to enable the uh, uh, or to control the width of the electron distribution and to direct the electrons towards the target and the focusing cup is made up of molybdenum so the next uh, part of the x-ray tube is the anode so as I said already, anode consists of a thick block of copper in which a tungsten button is embedded. Now why we are using copper is that we know that uh, as a result of the production of x-rays, 99% heat is generated. That means there is excess amount of heat generation inside the x-ray tube. So in order to dissipate the 
uh, heat produced at the anode of the x-ray tube we are using copper so copper enables the heat to be conducted towards the external environment so as to reduce the temperature inside the x-ray tube so because of which we are using a thick block of copper now inside the uh, copper block the tungsten button is embedded or is inserted this tungsten button acts as the target now why we are using tungsten as a target material is because of its high melting point that is 3387 degrees celsius it has high atomic number and also low vapor pressure now why uh, we are using a material with low vapor pressure is that if you are using a material with low vapor pressure the amount of vapor uh, released into the environment will be less so if you are using tungsten there will be less generation of tungsten vapors uh, so that the vacuum condition will not be disturbed now instead of tungsten we, are, uh, we also use an alloy of tungsten and rhenium. That means 90% tungsten and 10% rhenium. Now why we are using this is that the anode has a tendency to crack under severe stress due to heating. Uh, that means because of heavy heating, the anode may show a tendency to crack. Because of that, we can use an alloy of tungsten and rhenium that is 90% tungsten and 10% uh, rhenium so this will enable uh, or this will help uh, in uh, extending the life of the anode for mammographic x-ray tubes we can use molybdenum and rhodium so why we are using molybdenum and rhodium is that it will provide characteristic x-rays this uh, which will enable soft tissue study we know that mammography is a study of uh, breast tissue breast tissue um, that means it is a soft tissue study so um, uh, in mammography we are doing soft tissue study and because of that we can use molybdenum and rhodium as target materials uh, so uh, so that they will produce characteristic x-rays so that was all about the construction of x-ray tube now how the x-ray tube works i have already explained with the help of electric current we will heat the cathode material to a high temperature which will result in the production of electrons as a result of thermionic emission the electrons found at the surface of the cathode is known as phase charge now we will apply a high voltage uh, uh, across the x-ray tube as a result of the high voltage um, applied across the x-ray tube the electrons will get accelerated towards the target this target will stop the electrons or will cause in the deceleration of the electrons as a result of which the kinetic energy of the electron is converted into heat and x-rays so we will uh, the x-rays will be produced and the x-rays will be focused through the window and it will reach the patient uh, and the x-rays will uh, pass through the patient it will penetrate the tissue of the patient and we will get the image of the uh, part being examined on a cassette or a detector so we will learn uh, what is a cassette what is a detector in the upcoming classes for now how an x-ray tube works is the electrons produced at the cathode will be accelerated and it will be stopped by the target and hence the x-rays will be produced. So this is how an, uh, an x-ray tube works in order to produce x-rays. Thank you so much for watching. In the upcoming videos, we will uh, learn about uh, focal sport size, line focus principle, anode heel effect and all that. If you find this video useful, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.